Hi, it's Tegan McFarlane and you're listening to How's That Cricket Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of How's That The Cricket Podcast with me, Lily. Now this week, again, I am going solo as Ollie is still on holiday, but we have got another super exciting episode for you this week. Now this week we are joined by Tegan McFarlane, as you would have heard in the intro. Now we haven't actually got any cricket to talk about this week as the only games that have been going on is the test match and, and they're still going. So we haven't got any cricket this week, so we'll just jump straight into our interview. So like I mentioned this week, we spoke to Tegan McFarlane, who has been the long-time wicketkeeper for the Adelaide Strikers WBBL team. Last season, Tegan retired from WNCL cricket, her final game being against the Tasmanian Tigers in the grand final where the Scorpions unfortunately lost. But this year, Tegan stuck around with the Strikers for one final season. And I don't know what, I don't know how, but she somehow predicted that the Strikers were going to win because she stuck on for one more season and they won. So yeah, Tegan speaks all about her career growing up playing cricket in South Australia, how she stuck around and played for the Scorpions throughout the years. Started playing in 2007, so she's been with the Scorpions for a long, long time. She's been with the Strikers since the very first season of the Big Bash, so she's been in it for eight years. And like we said, this year was her final year, and she managed to bring the silverware home. So enjoy our interview with Tegan McFarlane. Oh, superb work, and given! Oh, that is absolutely magnificent from Tegan McFarlane. You won't get a better stumping down the leg side than that. Welcome, and thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Lily. Do you mind just telling me like, where in the world you are at the moment and what you've been up to? It's been a pretty hectic couple of weeks, hasn't it? So how have you been? Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, definitely nice a couple of weeks ago now to uh, bring home some silverware. So um, now I'm just back in my home country town of Balaclava. Um, just settling back into um, life back in the country. Um, yeah, as you can see, the farm behind the crops. Um, yeah, this is what this is where I love to be. So um, yeah, it's definitely been a whirlwind, uh, well, couple months really, but um, nice to be home. Yeah, brilliant. Like you mentioned, it's been pretty good to bring back the win for the strikers. But before we get into that, we'll just go right back to the very beginning. Now, born and raised South Australia, tell me a bit about your cricket pathway in South Australia and you know, how you first got into the sport down here. Yep. So growing up in uh, my small country town of Balaclava, it's about 100 k's north of Adelaide. Um, I guess I played a lot of my cricket or a lot of the sports um, with the boys at that time. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've got two younger brothers and um, we were definitely sport mad kids um, and, and gave everything a go. And I just tagged along with my brothers to Milo Cricket as it was back in the day. It's now Woolworths. Master Blasters, but um, yeah, so I just tagged along with them and and really loved it. And um, yeah, we had our own cement pitch out in the in the backyard, and also the the grass backyard that every other kid has as well. And yeah, I sort of progressed from there. And I was really blessed to have parents that were willing to take me to Adelaide um, for trainings, and I sort of progressed through the um, pathway um, with the soccer through that. So what was the pathway? If we get into like the little bits of yeah, the teams you played for, what were your teams that you represented in order to get to where you are now? Yeah, so out of that, um, I guess, Milo program at the time, I, I played under 12s here um, for Balaclava and through that, um, Sean Williams um, nominated me to trial for the under 12 Sapsaza team um, and we went away to um, Cobram Brugger in New South Wales for my first tournament um, and then from there, I guess, at that time, there wasn't a huge amount of girls playing cricket um, because I guess it wasn't really on the map at that stage that I sort of was lucky enough to progress through the um, under 15s, under 17s, under 19s as it was at that time um, and, Yeah, before being uh, picked up by the Scorpions. So a lot of players travel and go to different countries and play like for counties or international tournaments. Did you ever do any of that or was all your cricket based here in South Australia? No, nah, that was all based here in South Australia. I guess for me, um, at the time that I was coming through, we, the cricket wasn't really the forefront. Um, women's cricket wasn't really the forefront of everyone's mind. So I guess I was working, well, I was at school, but then working full time here in Balaclava and cricket was my hobby. I went to down to Adelaide to train for and play for. So at that time, yeah. I couldn't really give up the time to go overseas and do any of those types of things, but I didn't really know that those opportunities were available, I guess, either. 
Um, so I feel like, yeah, nowadays, yeah, everything is in front of anyone to go and do anything really. Um, but I think it was a little bit limited when I was first going through those early years and, um, yeah, it wasn't really on the cards for me. Yeah. Okay. And you said you were working and then having cricket as a hobby, if you don't mind me asking what were you doing <laughs> as work and when did you kind of go right? Like I can, I can play cricket. Like this is a thing that you can do as a job. Yeah. Well, when I finished school, I wasn't, um, yeah, I didn't really at that stage, wasn't ready to go to uni or I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in life. Um, and throughout year 11 and 12, I kind of worked in a bit of a printing house, um, promotional um, printing as well as signs and banners and um, car wraps and all those types of things so I really liked that and it was a my uncle ran that business and it was a family run business um, and he offered me a job there so I thought I'd jump at that because it gave me the opportunity to still stay in Balaclava Um, but through that I guess I was quite blessed in the sense that he was happy for me to continue to chase my cricketing dreams Um, and yeah at that stage again it was just a hobby so it was just chasing um, something I was really passionate about, but being able to work full time in something that I enjoyed doing as well. So um, I balanced, yeah, those two things for 10 years or so before um, cricket started to become more professional. And then that gave me the opportunity the last few years to play um, full time. That's brilliant. And then going into that, you know, you mentioned obviously playing for the Scorpions. You also played indoor cricket. Now tell me a bit about how you got into that, because it's obviously not as popular as, as outdoor. So what made you want to play a bit of indoor cricket? That's right. I'm just a cricket lover, to be honest. Um, and I guess it sort of come about um, would have been roughly 2016, potentially now. But I went away on a trip overseas um, with Nisha Isles and Rebecca Pollard. Um, and we were in Hawaii and um, we started talking about different things. And Nisha um, has been playing indoor cricket for a long time. And she was trying to get Steph Morrison and I to join up. And we were like, oh, yeah, we could. And then the next minute, like, we're in the state team and we're going away for the first carnival. So it was kind of like, whoa, a bit of a whirlwind. But um, I guess coming from the cricketing background, there's elements that cross over for both. So um, that's a fast-paced game. And, I, yeah, I've absolutely loved indoor cricket ever since. Yeah, and are there certain things that you've maybe picked up from indoor that have benefited your outdoor game? Like you mentioned, it's quite fast-paced. Is there anything else that you've really latched onto from indoor that you've taken into your outdoor game? Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, I got to have a bowl in indoor cricket, so that was always exciting. So I didn't always have to take the gloves. Um, I got to roll the arm over, so that that was always a bit of fun. But, um, yeah, just from a batting perspective, um, Nish definitely uh, was a big advocate for me just continuing to play um, outdoor style shots. Don't worry too much about playing the traditional down up and those types of things. Just play your drives and hit the ball hard and, and work on your gaps. So I guess it just, yeah, it was a, a nice confidence booster um, to just continue to play that way with my game. And it definitely helped my straight game for my outdoor stuff. Yeah. So then obviously talking about outdoor, you mentioned before playing with the Scorpions for for quite some time now up until last season now what's it been like through your involvement to have seen the development of the WNCL and Scorpions since you've been involved yeah it's been it's yeah come a long way I guess um when I first started out you were only required for a couple training sessions a couple hours um in the evening after everyone had been to work and then you'd come down yeah one day on a weekend just to either train on a Saturday morning or you're playing your cricket on a Sunday so um to think that I got to see that whole journey and by the end um, almost be in Adelaide Oval every single day doing some sort of training. Um, yeah, has been, I'm, I'm pretty proud, to be honest, to be part of um, that whole journey. And, you know, there's a little bit of envy of what the girls will get in the future and how good the environment and the support um, and the resources available are now, but I'd never give up what I've the journey I've had um, to be able to have the journey that the girls are going to have now so um, yeah it's definitely on the way up um, and yeah it will just keep building and building and I look forward to watching the girls um, for the rest of the season yeah real development of it like you said you've left it in a spot now where girls are they've just got it all kind of built out for them the pathways been made and they can just walk through it whereas you're one of the players who 
who had to you know structurally build that pathway and go on that journey with all the girls so do you feel satisfied with where you've left it do you feel like at the end of last season even though it wasn't a grand final win do you feel like you were okay with when you left it yeah absolutely and I think um yeah in terms of that loss in that final it, it, they're very hard to win um and so I guess just making it um and being a part of that as my last game was still pretty cool. And I, I always reflect back to 2015 when we did win our um, WNCL title and that really holds a, um, a special place in my heart, that win, because I feel like South Australia have had to fight and fight and fight um, to even be amongst it up there with the better states and to think, um, yeah, Big Bash-wise and WNCL-wise, we made the final for both formats last year. Um, I think that, yeah, that's kudos to... Um, South Australian cricket and yeah the people that are driving force behind that yeah definitely and talking about big bash now we'll build it we'll build it up to the big moment so you have been involved since day one pretty sure Sarah Taylor was keeping in the very first season I think you were yeah. you were just with the bats yeah. yeah so what again what's it been like to see that development because it's a different format it's been built a bit differently because the men's was existing before the women's so what were your initial thoughts going into the first big bash and yeah what did you make of all of it yeah that takes me back um it was definitely pretty cool I think because we played um we normally played the same team on a weekend and you'd play a t20 against them and 250 over games that's how it initially started when I first started and then it switched to two t20s and a and a one day so to think that we were going to break them up and we were going to fly a little bit more around the country um and we're going to wear a different uniform and um it was semi a different team but i guess um franchises still um contracted with their own home state um players but yeah it was there was definitely a thrill about it to think that oh they're trialing something new how good this is going to be and where can it go in the future so yeah as it started out and you played, you know, two T20s in a day and um, yeah, it was very condensed and in, yeah, the men's was the main thing and, and the women's cricket, it was just like, oh yeah, I guess they can just have this little window here and do this and do that. So to think where it is now and us in our own window and um, yeah, so many people I talked to even just down the street in my own um local hometown they they watched the game they watched this season they were pumped they were nervous they were sitting on the edge of their seat biting their nails and I was like I was actually quite calm to be honest so um but yeah it's just been brilliant honestly yeah just brilliant and I think um yeah having that local support but also just yeah having the support of all the Adelaide fans South Australian fans I know your family <laughs> are very big fans Lil, so <laughs> I was pumped to uh have you guys in the stands but um yeah it, it's been it's been wonderful to be part of yeah that's, that's incredible and and like you said it's been a long time coming it, it's been built up and built up and we're finally at a really good place with it so you've obviously been a very key part of the strikers team over many or over all eight of the years. So some players have come and gone, some have been out, some have been in, but there's been a core group. The South Australian girls have been there since the start. So what's it been like to, not only just as a tournament, but to see the progression of the strikers, because it's built up to be, well, like I said, the best team, because you yeah. can't go past the win. So what's it been yeah. like, to, yeah, overwatch the, the whole progression of just the strikers? Yeah, that's been one thing. We've got a pretty special... Um, group of core players of you as you've just said there that have stuck together throughout um, and are really passionate um, South Australians who then become really passionate Adelaide strikers um, and I guess through that having knocked on the door for the last four years of being all so close in, in two other finals and not kind of trying to getting over the line to think that we finally put it all together and got this one. It's it's definitely very special. Um, and I think, yeah, we'll reflect fondly on this one for a long, long time to come because I think the, the work we've been putting in, um, yeah, over a number of years now finally comes um, to the foe and it's just awesome to do it with that group of players that we know that we've fought hard um, with together and... Um, yeah, we're definitely got, yeah, getting the chocolates at the end was just just unbelievable. Yeah. And like you said, you know, there's lots of South Australian fans who are extremely loyal to their home team and home state. So 
Do you see yourself as a role model to the younger generation of cricketers, maybe even particularly here in South Australia or like rural South Australia at all? Yeah, definitely rural South Australia. Um, there's, yeah, girls coming through the path ways now in the 12s and 14s and 16s that are from country towns that are around me so I, I do take a special interest um, in their development and and yeah if help in any way I can I guess future I'd love to be a country girl and and that's where I live and so I'd love to be a part of some sort of programming that um, can push the development of the kids in the country so that they can have the same opportunities as the girls in the city because Obviously, it's harder for them to get down to training with travel and those types of things. But I've definitely, yeah, seen, you know, Ellie Falconers from Claire and Darcy Browns for Compunda and, and Darcy's playing for Australia now. So it's definitely possible for country girls to still be able to make it. So I've, I've definitely got a big focus on trying to help the country girls. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully something can get, um, get set up there <laughs> and see more girls like you who are making it onto the big stage for the Big Bash. That'd be brilliant. So now going to last year's Big Bash. Now, this one was probably quite a frustrating one because we had such a good build up into the finals, such good momentum, beating the Heat, beating the Renegades by a lot. And then to make it into that final against the Scorchers and to not win it. What was your kind of mindset around that game? And, you know, how, how frustrating was it to have such a good run? Did you think you were going to win that game? And, and if so, you know, what was what was the deal there? Yeah, I always think we're um, there to win games of cricket. Um, it was definitely... A uh, harder way to do it in the sense that how the new final system was set up and finishing in third and fourth and having to play the back-to-back -back games um, before yeah, flying to Perth. I think it was, yeah, it worked out amazingly well for us that the Renegades couldn't go home, unfortunately, due to COVID. So they had, they had to pick a venue and they picked Adelaide. So we got to play on Adelaide Oval. And then to play the two games that we did in the Eliminator and the Challenger, that was some of the best games to be a part of um, and the crowd was awesome and it just went wild and oh, it was just like, this This is so cool. So definitely um, that grand final, we, yeah, we were in it and, you know, at different times, if different things went our way, it could have been ours. But um, it just, again, showed us that we're up around the mark and that we are and it just made us hungrier to go, no, we've got to get it, like, next season. We've got that same core group. Let's add in a couple extra plays here and there to fill a couple needs um, and let's have another crack at this. So, and again, to, this season didn't go to plan for us at different stages. Uh, we lost a few games that we feel we should have won and um, vice versa, but that's, that's the nature of the tournament and how tough it is to win games of cricket. So um, yeah, it, it, it definitely, it definitely hurt us last year um, and it made us hungrier for this year. Yeah, now now talking about this year, now this is the bit that mm -hmm. we're probably listening in when I when I published the episode are waiting for. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> now this was your final season. Everybody, you know, was was aware that this was going to be your last season. So you retired at the end of last WNCL. So you weren't playing this year's WNCL, but you stuck on for the strikers. So uh -huh. what made you want to play one more season for the strikers? Was it the fact that you we didn't win last year and you're like, right, we can we can do it this year? Was that that the reason? To be honest, yeah, I wasn't sure that I would get the opportunity. Um, I guess the one-day format format is more suited to my um, game style. But when Luke offered me another contract with the Strikers and coming off the back of um, two losses in two grand finals last season, I was like, oh. I mean, it will be a different build-up for me because I'm so used to going back to pre-season in June and having to worry about all the running and um, the gym and all those types of things. But I was like, He's after it. Well, yeah, he, he wants to keep our core group together um, and he has enough confidence in my wiki-keeping ability that I would be able to keep myself in some sort of shape ready for that, that I yeah, absolutely jumped at the chance. And I figured, um, yeah, with re retiring from WNCL that I needed to be someone who had a longer journey retirement um, because it's been such a big part of my life and it's hard to let go sometimes. And I thought if I had um, a few more months to get used to the idea of retirement, that it would help. And then to top it all off with a, um, a medallion at the end um, and, a, and a championship win, oh, like, honestly, what dreams are made of. So I, could, I couldn't be more happy and I'm still pinching myself, Lil, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so talking about that now, like the start of the season, it was a bit of a, probably a bit of a tricky one, you know. We're thinking like we had obviously such a good season last year and we got off to a couple of losses, which was frustrating 
probably for everyone um, playing and watching. So what were your initial plans going into this season and, and how were you maybe personally or as a team going to go, right, this is how we're going to get one step further and, and win it this time, especially when you edged closer to the end of the season and we started winning? Yeah, so we probably didn't talk too much uh, about last year's final or yeah, any of that type of thing or exactly what we wanted to do. I guess we just knew internally, individually, that we were hungry for it because we'd been up around the mark for the last few years. Um, we knew, yeah, we obviously brought in um, Deandra Dotton and, and she added some top order uh, firepower to us and another handy addition with the ball. So we they definitely, obviously, um, with losing Coity and stuff like that, Gemma, took, Gemma Busby took another, um, took on a, on a roll with the ball and did really well and worked really hard over the preseason to be able to do that. So... I guess um, we were pretty settled in our lineup again, which is always handy. We weren't um, chopping and changing too much. Um, so we were very settled in how we wanted to go about it with the ball and and kind of, yeah, our bowling has been our staple for um, a number of years now. So um, those girls did their thing again and, and Das is only um, getting more and more experience and learning and growing about um, different situations in the game. So she went to another level as well. And I love wiki keeping to Willow. So she's definitely um, one of my favourites to wiki keep too. She gives me plenty of stumping. So um, yeah, I think our bowling's what held us together a lot of the time. And I think throughout our batting definitely struggled at times, but we found it by the end, thankfully. Um, and then I feel like we got the dream run in terms of that last Sunday of round games. Um, certain teams lost and there was a washout, which set up a home final for us um, and only having to play the one game. So I just thought when that all happened and then I thought the Brisbane Heat game was going to be the hardest game to win. And when we got over the line there and then knew we were in the, the last game, and sixes obviously are a, a, a tough lineup um, to beat, but... Um, yeah, we were we were confident enough in ourselves, even though we knew we were underdogs. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the the Brisbane Heat game there, which was uh, honestly like I don't think I've ever been more nervous. I actually felt sick. I actually felt so <laughs> sick watching the game. Um, but yeah, like I said, extremely close. Now it was the other batters who were who were trying to get the job done, do the run score. It was uh, Bridget Patterson hit hit the winning run. So for you watching on on the sidelines, you know you'd done your job, you'd done the keeping. What's it like to just have to watch on and hope that your teammates can? Because you've obviously you've got no influence past this point. You've just got to hope that they can do it. So what's that like to watch on and hope that they get over the line? Well, Lil, by the end, I was actually next batter in for the last few overs. So I was stressed to the max, that's for sure. I was trying to be think clearly about what my plan would be when I get out there and this, that and the other. But I definitely, when I had the pads on, I would I'd sit on a chair by myself a little bit further away from the team so I could just gather my thoughts a bit. But, um, yeah, watching throughout, it was yeah, definitely could have gone either way um, throughout most of the game and, and little moments and, yeah, what Bridgie did. Um, towards the end there um, was absolutely brilliant and that's kind of um, our mantra in that we don't rely on um, certain individuals um, we think everybody in our team contributes and that was Bridgie's moment to contribute for us so um, yeah I was definitely <laughs> on the edge of my seat for those last few uh, runs and thinking oh no what do I have to get out there I need one off one or something like that but um, yeah the girls did the job and oh gosh that, that, that's my favorite part um, about team sport is that elation that you have um, with your team just after the winning runs of here door um, you take that last week at all, whatever, and just the jubilation of everyone. Oh, it just it sends shivers down my spine thinking about it. That that's some of my favourite stuff is that um that, that team connection. Yeah, no, it's brilliant, and and obviously it, it paid off because you can tell the strikers are such a, a tight knit and close group, and and completely deserved the the grand final win after eight years of ups and downs <laughs> grand finals. Yeah. <laughs> we've needed it, and us fans as well. We've been we've been craving it as well. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But to go to to go to the day, to go to the grand final day. Now, what were your preparations up until you had to head to North Sydney? What what did you do in the morning of? Were you just trying to trying to relax, or, or were you you know trying to keep yourself busy and keep your mind off it? Yeah, I didn't. I, I was pretty relaxed to be honest. Um, I guess because we'd had the early morning on the Friday, um, it was a good chance to sleep in, and um, a few of the girls can't do that type of thing. But I could definitely. Um, 
I can definitely have a sleep in. So I, I was just chilled in that fact and went downstairs and had breakfast with a few of the girls. Um, and then, I don't know, it all come around pretty quick, to be honest. Um, I didn't do too much. I'm a bit of a bit of a journaler. So I did a, just wrote a few things down and um, yeah, got your thoughts out of your head in, in that regard. But yeah, I just relaxed and um, watched a bit of TV and, and went for a walk and yeah, just, I love getting on the foam roller and spiky yeah. ball and those types of things. So I just made sure the body was um, ready to go and, and then just enjoy the occasion because I guess being in them a couple of times now, you've kind of had that experience a little bit too. So you definitely know this to um, yeah, keep calm and, and enjoy the experience because they're hard to come by. Yeah. And, and even like, I guess, making the final one, obviously winning is, is better, but for you knowing that it was your last, your last game and your last season, that, that probably was a bit more of like a, right, let's just, let's just go out there and just not worry about, not worry about what happens. Just, just enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. I think I was more stressed uh, the weekend before um, with the last round games, because I feel like sitting in fifth at one stage, I wasn't sure if we'd make the finals all together or how far we'd go. And I was like, when is the when is the moment that it's my last game? When do I need to tell my teammates and and this type of thing? So it was kind of I was probably more stressed on that weekend um, mm. trying to work out those things. So I guess when we had the last game of the round on that Sunday and you know other teams had done what they'd done and we knew we'd made the finals, I could relax and just enjoy that last game there um, and farewell a great in Rachel Haynes and then uh, and look forward to Thursday at home and the bonus of getting another home game when I thought maybe I'd already played my last home game. So, um, yeah, definitely I just relaxed all that week um, and just lapped it up because, yeah, it's a, it's a real weird one when you, when you know it's kind of your last week a part of it or your last few games a part of it. Um, so you, I just definitely tried to lap it up as much as I could. Yeah. And, and you mentioned there about, you know, not knowing whether it was your last home game, because I remember it was the last like round game and you had all friends and family all come out and yeah. it was a big, you know, farewell. And then you're back again, like the next week. <laughs> back again. I know it was weird. I just saw that, that uh, challenger then as a, just a bonus game. Um, yeah. So that, that was excellent just to be able to have, yeah, the family and friends come again. So and they're pretty loud cheerers, um, the McFarland family. So, uh, yeah, they definitely know how to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, back to this game. Now, obviously, playing in front of a, a mostly Sixers home crowd, you also had the occasional Strikers fans. Your family were there. Um, we were there. And there were some other family members there. So what was it What was it like to you knowing that there were some Strikers fans in the crowd? And, and did that maybe help you in any way, knowing that there were definitely some people there cheering you on and supporting you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, there was definitely some extra soccer people that come across too. So it, it was more obviously with the little uh, um, strikers supporters that we, we knew it was just family and friends though. So um, we definitely knew that they would nice be as loud as they possibly could, even amongst a, um, a big sixes um, fan base. But the, the crowd was, yeah, awesome, to be honest. I mean, they, yeah, it was harder to hear when we did something well, there was no cheering. But when when the sixes hit a four or a six or got a wicket, it was electric atmosphere, to be honest. Um, and it would have been awesome if it was our own home crowd. But, um, yeah, it was brilliant that, yeah, my family could come over and, um, yeah, Maddie and Katie's families were there. They've already been from Sydney and and you guys could come over um, and, and some extra staff and, and Darcy's parents were there as well. So, yeah, we did definitely had a little, a little small cohort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was um, it was a bit funny because we were obviously we were sit, we ended up sitting with your family. Your family came and sat behind us, and we were in our little group, and <laughs> and um, people actually Sixers fans moved from behind us. So I, I take that as that we were being a bit a bit too loud, a bit too annoying. But um, maybe they just left because they were going to lose. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, know. Yeah. I think uh, my dad got in trouble by a few Sixers fans at one um, stage for being a little bit loud and yelling out, and there was a few devastated. Um, Sixers fans when um, their batting didn't start as well as they would have liked and uh, I'm thinking well you guys have got six and a half thousand people supporting you and we've got 30 so yeah. <laughs> we need them as loud as possible yeah exactly well yeah so we're batting first obviously set 147 now it was under par so so what did you make of that scoring did you think it was defendable before the second innings yeah definitely um 
going into the game, you would have liked a few more. Um, but the opportunity to bat first, I think, uh, was a big um, toss to win. And then I think putting up any score in a final and then trusting in what um, our strongest asset is, which is our nut with our bowling, um, I thought we could defend anything. So I guess, yeah, 147 doesn't uh, yeah, quite looks par or a little bit under par, but runs on the board in a final are huge. And, and to be honest, when... Yeah, we dropped a few catches early. You were like, oh, we just missed our opportunity. But, um, yeah, the bowlers just kept nice and calm, kept it there, um, stuck with their plans. And, um, yeah, we went from there. But, look, to be honest, yeah, DDOT hitting that 50 towards the end there um, was pivotal. I thought, yeah, Katie and Wolfie got us off to the best start possible without losing early wickets because I think that's also a nerve settler for everyone on the sidelines. So, um, yeah, as, as much as... Yeah, you would have loved 160, 170, 147, still definitely better than 120. So, um, yeah, we gave ourselves an opportunity, that's for sure. Yeah, and then moving on to the to the second innings, we had him at four for 16, and now us sitting there, we were thinking, like, we're thinking, is this a glitch? Like, this can't be right. Like, this does not feel real. So having them at four for 16, what was going through your mind? Because you're just thinking, we've got, like, the top team, you know, going into this as probably favourites. They're four down for 16 runs. What is going on? What was going through your mind at this moment? We, I still knew that had batters to come, to be honest. Um, so we watched throughout the tournament um, that their middle order at different times had um, saved them as well. So we knew that our job definitely was not done at that point. It's obviously good to um, yeah, take some top order wickets and they've got some star-studded power there. So um, I thought... Uh, Aaron Burns's wicket was an important one. I almost stuffed that up, but Aaron Burns' um, wicket was one because I feel like throughout the tournament she's um, been huge for their middle order and she took it deep against us um, when they played us at Karen Rotten Oval there. So definitely getting her, but you knew Mado Brown could hit sixes like she did and Sophia Kuston can clear the boundary as well. So there was definitely not job done. It was like, how can we continue to find dots and ones um, keep pushing that run rate up so there was, there was no one getting ahead of themselves that's for sure yeah no for sure and, and then they end up being like still four down for like 70 odd runs and then so we're like okay right, <laughs> let's, let's let's calm this down we're not let's not yeah. Yeah, get too far ahead but at what point did you know that we we're going to win was it when it was the last ball or was it you know a bit earlier on like when when was it for you yeah, it was It was later in the game. It definitely was, I guess, because, yeah, Maitland Brown sort of come out and um, took it to us a bit, um, and got the crowd involved and um, cleared the rope a few times, which was exciting for them. Um, but I guess just it wasn't probably until Wello, until that last over, until we sort of um, were definitely sure that she'd have to hit four sixes or whatever it was to... Um, get them over the line and that made it a little bit more difficult but I think like throughout the last few overs myself internally was just like how cool is this you know like we if we stick to our plans here we could um be WBBL champions but um no nah, it wasn't I wasn't until right yeah those last couple balls that you were like it actually sunk in and you're like oh my goodness yeah so, nah. <laughs> Yeah, and I actually had a chat with Katie yesterday and she said that after you won, you were just the most excited because obviously everybody knew how much it meant to you. So so yeah. when you won, were there even thoughts going through your head or was it just we've done it, like we've actually done it? And then when it sunk in, what what was going through your mind? And then being able to hold the trophy at the end, how special was that? Yeah, very special. I guess it was just initially, yeah, it was the just the elation of thinking, oh, we've done it, but it never really properly sunk in. Mm -hmm. um straight away and I guess you normally find whoever's nearby to give a hug and those types of things and when we finally come together as a team I somehow just ended up in the middle and I just went ballistic um and everyone was um messing up my hair and yeah it was a cool little moment that they sort of um just put their little bit of attention onto me just for a split second um mm -hmm. yeah because yeah they kind of all knew that it was my last and all those types of things but um yeah, it was all a bit of a whirlwind afterwards, to be honest. I still didn't really sink in. I yeah, raced over to see my family, jumped on a FaceTime um, to the Maccas at home um, just to say hi to everyone. And, and yeah, then next minute we were on the stage getting our medals and, and then pictures with the cup and, uh, yeah, uh, the whole experience just was unbelievable, to be honest, unbelievable. 
yeah it's absolutely incredible um and <laughs> super glad that I think everyone was glad that we could we could do it and not only just do it but but do it for you as well I think that was a really special moment seeing as you'd been there since since the start it was yeah really special for that one as well do you have a favorite moment just from the entire night uh for me it was probably um I mean it was nice to get out there and bat one last time whether that went quite to plan um it was just nice to be out there right at the end and I guess um I went to I did some coaching a few days later and one of the girls said to me um you'll be forever not out and I thought that was just kind of cool to think that yeah I didn't get dismissed on my last time that I walked out to bat so I thought that was um a pretty cool um little thing to think about but um yeah, it's, it's hard to pinpoint um, moments. I think the, the whole thing, the, the last ball relations, all those types of things. It was nice to get a dismissal to finish out. I would have liked to have done it a little bit more cleanly than I did, but um, it was nice to get in the dismissal column one more time. Um, but, yeah, it, just as a whole, just phew, ridiculous, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And that, like like we said, not only for, for you girls, but for, for the fans and the family as well. It was an incredible game. And my cricket highlight was the two games against the Heat and Renegades last year, but that's been topped. That has been topped by this game, let me tell you. <laughs> that has been topped. I can imagine. I think I might end up getting a um, photo sent through of um, your dad must have taken a picture of himself and with my family in the back. Oh, yes, right, I think so. <laughs> he did take a selfie. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, that was when they... He's just taking a selfie yeah. and the rest of my family like, hey, how good. Yeah, that was when that was when we were like, right, we've we've got this, but we're all still very nervous. So we're like, sit down. Like, right, let's just enjoy this moment. But yeah, that was yeah. funny. But you're glad you were there. Though. So glad. Honestly, it was like, because we're thinking like if we... Because we travelled over for the Brisbane one where it was against the heat. And we're like, you know, it was a disappointing travel home. So we're like, let's just hope it's it's a it's a fun travel home. So we wore our shirts, we wore them on the plane. <laughs> we're, like, we're not changing into our normal clothes. We're wearing these shirts. Um, so yeah, that's really amazing. It definitely been one family that's been a massive supporter of, yeah. of the Adelaide Strikers. So we we definitely know. We always look around. Are the, are the Harveys in the, yeah. the crowd today? Yes, they are. Look at them. Yeah, always. It's like, just amazing. So, yeah, definitely as much as excited as you would be. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. imagine uh, how excited we are as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to you know follow you girls around and to watch it. Like I've said, don't think we follow any other cricket team as closely as we do for the Strikers. <laughs> so it's been brilliant. But yeah, now do you have a, a I guess a favorite aside maybe from the win because I know that's pretty incredible. But do you have a favorite cricket memory from your career that's maybe a couple that's really stood out to you? I think I, I mentioned it early. Definitely in 2015 when we won the WNCL title. Mm-hmm. Um, We'd, we'd made the final the year before and got smashed by New South Wales. So to have fought back um, and made it the following year, I, I think like we learnt a lot from that the previous year. We were just we just couldn't believe that we were in a final um, that previous season. So um, to make it the following season and then uh, be good enough to beat New South Wales, um, yeah, that that was that's a, a pretty special one for me um, personally. Yeah, I debuted in. 2007 I think it was in the first game actually against New South Wales so um yeah that was a really cool moment and Andrea McCauley gave me my cap um and then at that time she was just an assistant coach but she went on to um coach the Scorpions for a number of years there and was a big advocate um of mine and and probably someone that I owe a lot to um in keeping me in the game and and giving me opportunities um in my cricket but um, yeah, throughout, there's, there's, I've got a couple favourite dismissals um, throughout the journey. There was one, I can't remember if it was the second season of the Big Bash or the third season out on Adelaide over with keeping to Wello. Um, Cappy went down the wicket, actually got an outside edge um, and it went kind of sharp. Um, high to my right and I managed to get a glove on it and I sort of just ended up aeroplaning it <laughs> around because I couldn't believe I'd shot myself that I even took it. So um, those ones and, and sort of leg side stumpings are the be all and end all of, um, of wiki keeping. So I've got some special memories of those a few dismissals like that. But yeah, yeah. Just what I craved the most so yeah definitely went out on the right note <laughs> yeah and like you you mentioned obviously beating New South Wales it's it's nice to beat New South Wales isn't it it's bloody nice 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've been, they've, yeah, they've sort of, um, yeah, been that top team for a, for a long, long time, and sort of the yeah the drivers of it initially. So everyone's been chasing them, but we're sort of leveling the playing field a little bit now. So it's good to see. Yeah, and you've done it for the South Australians because, like I said, we've always been the underdogs. It's always been hard to get up to the same level as them, and maybe even like Victoria. So to in order to to do it for the the South Australians, it's is very nice, nice feeling to um, to get it done. That's for sure. I'm definitely a proud South Australian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's all the questions I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been brilliant to chat to you and, and congratulations on the win again. What a, what an incredible season and what a way to wrap up your career. It's been incredible to watch you and yeah, absolute pleasure to, um, like I said, follow you guys around and, and watch you over the years. It's been incredible. So thank you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you very much for the support. Oh, superb work and given. Oh, that is absolutely magnificent from Tegan McFarlane. You won't get a better stumping down the leg side than that. So that was Adelaide Strikers wicketkeeper Tegan McFarlane. What a brilliant interview. And look, I've known Tegan for many, many years, obviously being a Strikers fan since day one. She's watched me and my sisters grow up, which is just, yeah, super, super heartwarming. But yeah, really, really love Tegan. She's been, like I said, at such a core part of the Strikers team since day one. And and her being able to overlook the progression of the Strikers, I think, was was really nice to hear and really nice to hear where she sees South Australian cricket going into the future. Like I said, Tegan obviously retiring is, is going to be a huge loss to the South Australian cricket world. She's been a huge part of our teams and everyone involved in South Australian cricket and I'm sure Australian cricket are going to really, really miss her. So Tegan, thank you for all you've done for South Australian cricket. You've paved the way for many young girls and like you said, your big role model for all the girls in the country to show that it is possible and you can represent your state in the Big Bash and in the WNCO as well. So thank you for all you've done for cricket and we'll really miss seeing you on the field. But like we said, I'm sure we'll see you around. But yeah, that is our episode for this week. We really hope you enjoyed listening. If you enjoyed it, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter or TikTok at How's That TCP. You can send us an email at How's That The Cricket Podcast at gmail.com or you can leave us a rating on Spotify as well. Next week, we'll be back with Harry Conway, who is Adelaide Strikers, SA Redbacks fast bowler. And he's known, obviously, for his array of impressions, which he talks to us about. So, yeah, just a, a genuinely funny guy who was absolutely brilliant to talk to. So make sure you stick around next week for that one. But that is all from me this week. Really hope you enjoyed listening. How's that?